Hi again. We're still going to be talking about circuit analysis in this video. So we're still predicting mathematically what voltages and currents we expect in a circuit. In this section, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is often abbreviated as KVL. All lump parameter circuit analysis relies, basically, on only two circuit analysis rules. One is Kirchhoff's current law, the other is Kirchhoff's voltage law. There are some other things we do need to account for. We need to obey the passive sign convention and mathematically model the relationships between voltage and current for our circuit elements. But the final analysis always boils down to applying Kirchhoff's laws. So in this video, we're going to get a big chunk of information relative to analyzing circuits. Kirchhoff's laws are easy to apply, but you do need to pay attention to the details. A fair amount of a successful circuit analysis amounts to nothing more than bookkeeping. It's not difficult as long as you follow the basic rules rigorously. Kirchhoff's voltage law is very simple. The sum of all the voltage differences around any closed loop is zero. Really, all that this is telling us is that any node just has one voltage. No matter what path we follow through the circuit, if we get back to our original node, we have to also get back to the same voltage. So, another way of stating KVL is that the sum of the voltage rises is equal to the sum of the voltage drops around the loop. For example, suppose we have a closed loop with n circuit elements. The voltages are V1, V2, V3, on up to V sub n with the indicated polarity. So, if we sum the voltage drops around this loop, starting here, V1 is a voltage drop, so V1 plus V2 plus V3, add up all the other voltages up to V sub n, that totals to zero. Notice that from our equations, at least one of the voltages here will need to be negative. KVL will keep track of the correct sign on the voltages as long as you're consistent about your assumed sign convention. Remember that KVL applies to differences in the assumed voltages around a closed loop. These differences are based on the assumed polarities of the voltage in the loop. In order to make sure that things work out right, you just need to make sure that you're consistent about your assumed polarities and the signs you assign to the voltages when you write your KVL equations. In order to make sure you're consistent, I have a recommended approach to dealing with the signs of the voltage differences. You don't necessarily have to follow this recommendation, but it does tend to keep people out of trouble. First, you always need to indicate your assumed voltage polarity on the circuit schematic. That tells you what polarity corresponds to a positive voltage. When writing KVL, indicate the loop on the diagram, including the direction you will be following the loop. Finally, pick a starting point on the, at any point on the loop and follow the loop you indicated on your schematic. When you encounter a voltage difference, if you see a negative sign first, Treat the difference as negative. If you see a positive sign first, then add that voltage difference. As long as you're consistent with this approach, all your KVL equations should turn out just fine, and the signs on the voltages you determine will indicate the actual voltage polarities in the circuit. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's our example circuit. The assumed voltage polarities in the circuit are indicated. These polarities were chosen at random. Let's pick a loop and write KVL around it. I'll choose this as loop 1. I'm going to follow this loop in this direction, picking an arbitrary starting point, say down here, and following the loop, I see a negative sign on V1 first, so I'm going to get negative V1. I'll see a positive sign on V2 first, so that's positive V2, and I see a negative sign on V3 first, so minus V3. That brings me back to my starting point, so that equals 0. The same is true for any other loop in the circuit. For example, let's go all the way around this outer loop here. Um, this time, I think I'll start up here. I'm still going to be going clockwise, although I don't need to. So negative V5 plus V6 plus V7 minus V1 plus V2 brings us back to my starting point, those sum to zero. Uh, one more time, I think I'll switch the direction of KVL for loop three. I'll go this direction, I'll go through this section here, and I guess I'll start down here just for kicks. 
The first thing I see is going to be a negative terminal for V6, a positive terminal for V5. The next one I encounter will be V3. I see the negative terminal first when I go this direction, minus V3. And finally, I see the negative terminal on V7. That brings me back to this starting point, so those sum to zero. 